Space exploration is important because we're trying to understand where the Earth came from and why other planets are different from the Earth if they all formed out of the same material. So if you just look at three of the inner planets, look at Venus, Earth and Mars. Venus has a very thick atmosphere and it's got uh, a runaway greenhouse effect, it's carbon dioxide atmosphere. Earth is the Goldilocks planet, which is just, just right, it supports life of course. And Mars further out, we know that there was water on the surface of Mars at one stage, but it's vanished. So why did those three planets evolve in very different ways? So we can't do the sort of global experiments on, on Earth, but we want to understand how the natural changes occur on Earth. And so we look to the other planets to see how they evolved and change in different, in different conditions. And in the process, we learn more about our own planet. Now, one of the things that we know that life on Earth generally requires is, is water. So hence the interest in Mars, where we know that water has existed. But if you go further out in the solar system, is this moon Enceladus, because there is liquid water underneath the surface, and that's based on our observations with, with Cassini. So if you've got liquid water, uh, then at least you have the possibility of life. So it would be great to, you don't even have to get to the surface. You can sample the, the plumes of ice particles that are coming out from the south polar region of Enceladus and study those. And actually we're doing that at least partially with, with, with Cassini and, and that work should continue. But ultimately it should, it should really be considered to send a spacecraft back to Saturn to look at Titan and to look at Enceladus especially if you're interested in the origin of life. We've learned an awful lot about the whole Saturn system with, with the help of Cassini and the Huygens probe. For a start, we've realized that the Titan, as well as having an atmosphere similar to what the atmosphere of the Earth was like before life began, has a whole kind of cycle, just like the water cycle on Earth. There's a, there's a methane cycle on, on, on Titan. It has lakes, it has rain, it has clouds, it has riverbeds, uh, but we're not talking about flowing water, we're talking about liquid methane and perhaps ethane as well. With regard to, to the rings, we've seen structures in the rings that people have seen in numerical modeling of the formation of planets. And this, this reinforces the idea that the, the rings um, are a, a laboratory for studying the processes that went on in the formation of, of planetary systems. So we're seeing th the rings evolving, we're seeing objects impacting the rings, and it's, th it's the most incredible opportunity. So unlike the flyby missions where we just had a few weeks to, to target different objects, see what was going on, this time we're, we're looking at changes. The rings are changing, Titan is changing, we're moving into the spring and summer in the northern hemisphere of Titan. We're getting to see things we've never seen before. It's got a, it's got a lake district at its north pole it's the, mo the most amazing system. So, so Saturn has, we, we knew it was going to be interesting, but uh, we really didn't know it was going to be this interesting. It's an incredible system.